Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. I have been solving math problems for GRE out of this book here. Practicing to take the GRE general test, the 10th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. The problem that I'm about to solve is the one that you're going to find on page number 328, contrary to comparison question number 12. Let's take a look at it, see what it has to say. Number 12. They give you an equation here x squared minus 3x plus 2 equals 0. And they want us to compare twice the sum of the roots of the equation. Alright. Twice the sum of the roots. of the equation versus 6 well I think right there I think right there they probably lost a few people because uh, some, sometimes uh, people have not heard of certain terminologies in a while in many years and they forget about it what does it mean root of an equation the root of an equation is just a very fancy way of saying the solution to an equation. For example, if I tell you that x squared equals 4, what value of x, the root of an equation simply means, what value of x will satisfy this equation? And if you're sitting there and saying to yourself that x equals 2, well that's great, but that's only half the answer. There are two roots. This equation has two roots. In other words, this equation has two values of x that will satisfy the equation. Positive 2 times positive 2 because it's x squared. Positive 2 times positive 2 is 4 and so is negative 2 times negative 2. So this equation right here, there are two roots to it. Positive 2 and a negative 2 squared. This is how we write positive and negative 2. That's how it's written. And the both of these quantity equal positive 4 which is what we have here. And these two quantities, positive 2 and negative 2, positive 2 and negative 2, are called roots. Roots of the equation. The question here is, they want, they want you to add, they want you to, there are two roots to this equation because it's a quadratic equation. It has a second power. And generally speaking, second power means it has two roots. If it's, if it's a cubic equation, if it's, it's raised to a third power, it will have three roots and so on and so forth. This equation has two roots. In other words, there are two values of x which will satisfy this equation. Our job is to figure out what those two values of x are. Once we have figured out, once we have found the values of x which will satisfy this equation, then we are to add the two values, which are the two roots, then take twice the sum, twice the sum of the roots, and then finally when we arrive at that quantity, compare that quantity versus 6. That's all. Let's, let's get going then. Enough of the, enough of the talk. I'm going to erase all of this thing now. We're going to figure out the roots of this equation. How do we figure? How do we solve a quadratic equation? It's very simple, very straightforward. We're looking for two numbers so that when we multiply them, we are looking for two numbers so that. So that when we multiply them, we get a product of positive two. And that's not that's not all of it, that's only half the story. And When we add them, we have to get, we must get, we have to, we have to get the sum of negative 3. Sum of negative 3. And your job is to sit there and figure out what those two values might be. So pause this video if you have to, put your thinking cap on, find it where, where it is, where you, where you left it last time. Put it on and find out the two values of two numbers so that when we add those two numbers, we get a positive 2 
Oh, sorry, rather, when we multiply those two numbers, so that we're looking for two numbers, so that when we multiply them together, we get a positive 2, and when we add them, we get a negative 3. So like I said, pause the video if you have to, and come back after you have the answer. Alright, I'm going to continue here in about 3 seconds. So, what did you find for the two numbers? The answer is, I'm going to raise all of this thing because I need the room. I need to raise all of this thing now. Again, I'm going to read it to you one more time in case you have trouble reading it because this is a very light ink. It says we are looking, we are looking in case you have trouble with my handwriting also. We are looking for two numbers so that when we multiply them together, we get a product of positive 2. And when we add them, same two numbers, when we add them, we have to get a sum of negative 3 right here. That's where negative 3 comes from. And that's where the positive 2 comes from. And those two numbers are, those two numbers are negative 2 and negative 1. Because negative 2 times negative 1, negative 2 times negative 1 equals positive 2, which is what this is. And negative 2 plus a negative 1 will give us our negative 3, which is what this is. And this positive 2 comes from here. So we found the two roots, negative 2 and negative 1. So I'm going to start my solution. Enough of that. So we're going to start our work and this is how we do it. I'm going to actually show you the whole procedure. It does not hurt to learn it. So here we go. So x squared minus negative minus 2, x minus x, you see negative 2 and negative 1 negative 2 and negative 1, negative 2x and a negative 1x will give us negative 3x plus 2. Again, negative 2x times a negative x is going to give us the positive 2x squared. Positive 2x squared. That's how we get it. Let's continue here. Now, if you look at these two terms here, do you find anything common in them? Maybe I'm taking way too long. I don't know how much time I've taken so far in the back. I have to check. Do you find anything common in that, those two terms? I'm getting paranoid. I'm going to check in the back, see how long I've taken so far, because I think I'm going way too slowly. Yes, my paranoid was justified. We have taken eight minutes already, so we have to, we have to wrap this up, wrap this thing up. I'm going, as I said, I'm going too much of a leisurely pace, uh, explaining too much stuff. Do you find anything common in these two terms? The answer is yes, x is common. This is x times x and this is two time, negative 2 times x. Let's take that x common. If you take out the x common from the first term, you're left with only x, x times x. This x times x is going to give us x squared minus 2. Again, if you were to open it, x times negative 2 will give us negative 2x. Now look at these two terms here. This term and this term. What do you find common in that? There is nothing common in that. The only thing common in those two terms is, is negative 1. So if I take out negative 1, I'm left with x here. And this positive 2 will become negative 2 because negative 1 times x is going to give us negative x. And again, negative 1 times negative 2 is going to give us positive 2. Now I want you to look at these two terms, this and that. What do you find common in that? Well, I find x minus 2 common. x minus 2 is common. x minus 2. If once, uh, once we take out x minus 2 common, here we are left with x. And here we are left with negative 1. And we are told that all of that is equals to 0. All of that equals to 0. So if I tell you that I have two quantities, a and b, and when I tell you that when I multiply them, I get a big fat 0, what do you surmise from that? What do you conclude from that? What do you infer from that? Well, there are two or three possibilities. One possibility is that a is equal to 0, or b is equal to 0 or they are both equal to 0. If a is equal to 0, it doesn't matter what b is, a 0 times any quantity is 0. If b is equal to 0, it doesn't matter what a is, a times b would be 0. Or perhaps they are both 0. That's what, those are the three possibilities we have to contemplate here. So what this implies is that either x minus 2 equals to 0 or x minus 1 equals 0. 
If x minus 2 equals 0, by adding 2 on both sides, we'll find that x equals positive 2. Or, this scenario tells us that x equals positive 1. But that's not what I told you before. Something has gone wrong. Positive 2 and positive 1. Yes, that is it. Positive 2 and positive 1. x equals positive 2 or positive 1. And we'll verify it very quickly by putting it in here. If x equals positive 2, then x squared will be 4 minus 2 times, minus 3 times 2. 3 times 2 is 6. 4 minus 6 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus positive is 0. If x happens to be positive 1, if x happens to be positive 1, we put it in here. 1 squared is 1 minus 3 times 1. So 1 minus 3 times 1 is 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. And again, negative 2 plus a positive 2 will give us 0. So these two so are. So, so the two roots that we were looking for, the two roots that we were looking for, the two roots of this equations are positive 2 and negative, and positive 1. Positive 2 and positive 1. We are supposed to take twice the sum. So if we were to add them up, the sum of the roots is 2 plus 1, which is 3. And if you were to take twice that thing, twice the sum of the roots would equal 6. That's all. Twice the two roots are positive 2 and positive 1. If you add them together, you get 3. And since we are looking for twice the sum of the roots, twice the sum of the roots will be 2 times 3, which is 6. Which, hence, this quantity in column A equals 6. The answer in this. Therefore, the answer is C. That's all. That's all it is. That was the end of the story. About uh, about 55% uh, of the people who took this exam, 56% actually, who took this exam uh, had trouble with it. They got this question wrong. Only about two-fifths got it right. 44% got it right. But I hope you found it helpful. That's what they mean by the sum of the roots. First, you have to find the roots. Once we find the roots, we have to add them up. We add up the two roots, we get three, and then we take twice the root, which is six, which happens to be the same as the quantity of the column. And that's all. I hope you found it helpful. If you wish to get hold of me, for personal private tutoring, I do face-to-face -face tutoring, private tutoring. I also tutor over the internet via Skype, and I also uh, provide tutoring services over the telephone. If there is anything at all that I can help you with, get hold of me by sending me an email. Go to my website at www.prep, P-R-E-P, prep, F-O-R-4, gre.com, and send me an email. Or you can go to www.keshwaniprep.com and drop me a line. All right? Thanks.